Hey everybody, thank you for downloading episode 55 of We Got This with Mark and Hal, the first of our two special Max Fun Drive episodes. So twice during this episode, you'll hear Mark and I come on and talk to you a little bit about what the Max Fun Drive is, how you can get involved, and how you can support uh, not only us and especially us, but also all the other great shows that are on this network. So uh, stay tuned for that, listen through the whole thing, and enjoy episode 55 of We Got This with Mark and Hal. Hello, I'm Hal Lublin. And I'm Mark Gagliardi. Since the dawn of humanity, one issue has gone unsettled. With the fate of the world in the balance, we're here to settle once and for all. Coffee or tea? That's right, don't worry everyone. We got this. Podcast should have a theme song. Podcast should not have a theme song. Yes, they should. No, they shouldn't. They sound good. Yeah, but people are just going to skip past it. Hmm. You know what? You're right. We got this. Hello, everybody. Hi, the world. Here we are backstage again. Yeah, we are still between the same shows that we were between before. That's right. But this time we have the voice of Night Vale with us. Cecil Baldwin. Hi, everybody. God, that voice. I know. You know that voice. Everybody, you know that voice. That is the voice of Night Vale. That's right. Every time I hear you speak, I feel like I've become a microphone. Just like the... Hello, everybody. Oh, my God. <laughs> so good. How do you do it? I don't want to debate anything. I just want to hear you read stuff out of the phone book. Oh, it's all genetics. Don't worry. <laughs> good. I'll never have it. I've never really? trained. Never did anything. Oh, thanks, Dad. I'm just lazy. <laughs> <laughs> See? Lazy people can do just fine in this world. That's right. Set, um, set, your, set your expectations really low. That's so, so, and Cecil, then work from there. Everyone here knows that you are. Everyone listening probably knows that you're the star of the world-renowned podcast. Welcome to Night Vale. Mm-hmm. Give the listeners your coffee versus tea CV. Oh, um, okay. I have managed uh, at least one coffee shop. Oh. Um, I almost worked for a coffee roaster, but I did not get the job. I was very excited to do that job, though. Um, I, I am a lifelong coffee and tea drinker. Okay. Um, I enjoy both. So I feel like I'm kind of riding the fence between, between both of these mm-hmm. things. Uh, um, I, you know, certainly I have, I have thoughts and feelings about both coffee and tea. We'll both. get to that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are currently holding a coffee in your hand. Right? I am. Yeah. I am. I, I'm one of those people that like, I will drink a pot of coffee a day. And then as the sun goes down, I will gradually switch to tea. Are you one of those like coffee people though? Cause here's my, like, I'm, I, I don't drink really much of either. We've, we've established over the course of almost a year of doing this. You drink I, lemonade. Yeah. I drink like a child. Like I have to have a milkshake form of coffee and tea. I'll have like, if I'm really, my voice is wrecked. I need tea. Like it's, it's medicinal. Tea is great. Yeah. It's but, good for that. But culturally, like there's, there are coffee people like don't talk to them until I've had my coffee. Like they have the mugs that have like the, uh, drink coffee first. Uh, let's say I everybody. hate Mondays. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. That, yeah. that kind of stuff. Like that really, you, you don't strike me as that kind of person, even though you enjoy coffee, right? Absolutely. No, I, I mean, to me, there is something really wonderful about, uh, uh, gas station coffee or, uh, uh, old school New York diner coffee. Mm-hmm. It just depends on what you're looking for. The like sort of burnt, really opaque, super, well, super watery as well. Cause, oh, really? Like my theory was, you know, like back in the day, you know, like when coffee shop, not, not coffee shop, like Starbucks coffee shop, but like greasy spoon diners, yeah. you know, were kind of the Amer- quintessential Americana. It was the idea was for a nickel, you could go in and sit, you know, rest your tired, you know, depression era shoes in a <laughs> greasy spoon. <laughs> And what year are you from? I'm from all years. <laughs> I'm, I'm in fact a time lord. Um, so that's my CD. Scoop! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you heard it here first, kids. That's right. Um, no, it was like you could, you could pay a nickel and sit in one of these greasy spoon diners and sip on really weak coffee that has a flavor. You know, it's like kind of flavorful, mm-hmm. but you could drink like six cups and not feel like you've just done like an eight ball of cocaine right you know? i always feel like diner coffee feels way stronger to me and maybe it's oh. just because it's burnt and that oh burnt yeah, yeah, yeah makes it feel stronger and more bitter because it's just been you know sitting on a warmer all day well now wait okay if we're gonna really get into this do you have any do you have any uh plans of getting uh money from starbucks to uh sponsor this show no because we're uh, not anymore. We don't. No, you don't. Because <laughs> here we go. Okay. So, so 
about fast forward from the 1930s mm-hmm. to like uh, the, the 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 90s, right? Mm-hmm. Where uh, no one really knew in America, like no, like cappuccinos were not a thing, lattes were not really a thing unless you went to like very specific places and people who kind of brought that coffee culture over, and then. Starbucks comes out and their coffee is really strong and it's like mm-hmm. has that kind of like heavy flavor to it. My theory is they it's just because they roast their beans so much because they wanted to like create this idea of oh this is what real coffee tastes like. Right. You know, um I've I've always heard the idea that uh you know the less roasted the better because you can actually like taste the coffee and right. otherwise you just get the taste of like you know, kind of like burn, right. burning, you know, roasty something, you know, I, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a light blend coffee. I'm a, yeah. I, I always get a blonde roast. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I, it's funny. I was talking to my brother about this episode, uh, because after every episode, my brother will, uh, either text me or call me. Uh, he was going crazy yesterday after hearing our <laughs> president's episode. Um, and he, I told him what we were talking about next was, uh, coffee or tea. And he goes, Oh, it's tea. Tea is delicious. Coffee is just burnt. And then, like, what food do you have that you burn it first and then <laughs> serve it to people? Uh, which I thought was interesting. There is some. Maybe that is the over roasting of the new yeah. style of coffee. Oh, they, I think, I think it was like, it was almost like a marketing ploy to right. be like, oh, don't drink that old, old coffee. Right. Like, drink this new coffee that has like a bold, fresh flavor. And then that was kind of the gateway to get people to drink espresso. They also have a lot more caffeine in Starbucks coffee than any other coffee available. They must. This Which, is this is scientifically uh, they like pump it in. They fill it up. And then here comes the crazy conspiracy theorist again. <laughs> what they're doing, man? <laughs> um, There's signals on every cup, man. That mermaid sending me messages. That's right, right. <laughs> the the proletariat must rise up. Um, okay, so. When I grew up on the East, East Coast, which you, mm-hmm. you guys did as well, you, you grew mm-hmm. up, uh, ost- ostensibly you grew up together. We sort of did. Cesar like, and I have known each what? other since we were children. Yeah, like five miles away from each yeah. other. Yeah. Tops. You had Dunkin' yeah. Donuts growing up, yeah? Sure. Uh, we had Krispy Kreme. Krispy so. Kreme, Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. yeah. But like that, around. like, don't you just say them like they're the same <laughs> thing? <laughs> I would say we're both around. Yeah. No, they're th- two, two lovely establishments. <laughs> One is just far superior than the other. I always thought that people thought that Dunkin' Donuts coffee was the, like, they love to go there for the coffee. Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. since Starbucks has risen, mm-hmm. to your point, they go like, that stuff is just water. Right. Because, because now Starbucks is giving everybody, like, the Brondo of coffee. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's got electrolytes, guys. Um, and, and all these different flavors and stuff, which I don't think really, like my mother, who, who drank coffee all the time, she would always put a stick of cinnamon in the grounds before Ooh, she, she brewed it. Oh, that's nice. So that smell is a is like a good mm-hmm, yeah. uh, triggers a good memory for me. But also, like that was as flavored as coffee got, unless you got like a French vanilla cream right, 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 right. from international right. whatever. Oh, yeah. now I get Keurig cups. I have one of those Keurig machines, and I don't bother with regular flavored coffee. I'm like, Psh, yeah. why would I use coffee flavored coffee when right next to it on the shelf is little cups of vanilla biscotti flavored? Sure. <laughs> These are delicious, and there's no sugar in them. There probably is a ton of sugar in them, but not <laughs> listed on the packaging. Yeah. But coffee's also. Do, do you? I, I see right now you have you have cream in there for sure. Some I sort do. of cream. You have sugar as well. I am a I am a uh, yeah light and blonde. You that's, know. that's okay. what light and blonde means. Yeah, that yeah. Means cream, sweet and blonde. That's sweet, it. sweet, and blonde. sweet and blonde. Yeah. Okay, so light and blonde would be like a skim milk or something. Yeah. Like I, honestly, yeah, I'm just like sugar and some sort of uh, dairy product. I, I can't do I can't do the almond milk. Mm-hmm. I can't do like I mean I love almond milk by itself, but in coffee it just doesn't quite hold up. See right. for me I need all if I'm gonna do any sort of creamer, I'll do almond milk because oh. uh cream or half and half or m- even like whole milk, they feel too heavy. They make coffee feel heavy to me. Oh I love that. That's my favorite part. Is that it just sort of is like a gut bomb. Yeah. Like it's but like if I'm out at a restaurant they actually have heavy cream, I will ask to use like really cream. Ooh, it's delicious. Have you ever at, at Thanksgiving this year? My uncle was was taking French vanilla ice cream and putting it into his coffee. It's great, cream. I have yeah. vanilla it's a great in idea, right? Before. I mean, I'm generally a black coffee guy. I drink oh. it, stri- and maybe that's why I like the flavored ones because mm. I like it. No sugar, no um, no no, no sweetener, no milk. Yeah. But, but if you do the flavored one, it might have some of that in it. So if it's just a straight black coffee, mm-hmm. you're you're fine with that. Even if it's I will not- still prefer that to really? coffee with cream and sugar. Yeah, oh, wow. 
I like it. Uh, yeah, I like it dark and bitter. Yeah, good. That's good. <laughs> so, so if we're looking at these against one another, we have the culture of the drinks. Sure. We also we should probably look at how flexible the drinks are, like okay. or or, or uh, versatility. Mm-hmm. Like coffee, you have you have the espresso, which is the, the, you drink in small amounts because it's right. super caffeinated. Sure, sure. And then the lattes, which are like those are the ones where people do designs in them. Yes, right? people. Yeah, mm-hmm. you can do the, the latte design, which I'm always. <laughs> You know, like you're like, oh, that's so great! You spent an extra like thirty seconds making design in my latte that Have I will seen- immediately destroy <laughs> as soon as I stir some. Not until after you Instagram it, of course, yeah. of course. It um, becomes like Fraggle Rock, like that's the work of the doozers. Like, that, they work that, to build- and then we just come and just yeah. burn them all down. Or, or I like to think of this as something very zen-like. Oh, sure. You know, it's like this. This piece of art only exists for a minute, and yeah. then it is destroyed. All and art is meant to be consumed and that's then right. consumed. So that's right. yep. Starbucks is now, I saw a commercial the other day for their new, some new drink that they're making. Uh, and it is, if you look down on it, bird's eye view, it is the white foam on top and a little uh, brown dot in the middle, like yeah. where they put in the Wait, let me espresso. Guess. Is it a macchiato? No. Uh, macchiato? Know, is that like a black and white or something is the name of it. So oh. They've created some new thing. Oh, is it a flat white? Flat white. Okay. Okay. Uh, so listen, if you were to go to any pretty much anywhere in Europe, but especially mm-hmm. England, and like flat white is one of the things that is on every, like it's ubiquitous. It it's was like, in, you're going to Australia and New Zealand very soon. In Australia and New Zealand, the flat white was the coffee of choice. I yeah. have no freaking clue what a flat white is. Neither do I. <laughs> but what they did do is they had this little white foam with a brown dot in the middle. Yeah. And all I thought while watching that commercial was, oh, Starbucks has figured out how to homogenize the decorative top of your coffee thing <laughs> because they can't expect all of the baristas in thousands of Starbucks around the world to be able to draw a fleur de lis yeah. But they can be like, we can teach everybody how to make a brown like a dot. dot on a white field. Because I always thought, I always thought that that was like the hallmark of the macchiato, which to me, like, if I remember right, like macchiato doesn't mean like marked. So the idea is that it's like, like you're just like marking it with a little, little bit of, you know, little something there. Yeah. But I don't know. I've, I've tried flat whites and they're delicious and little. And then I want like six more of them. So I never, I, yeah, I'm like, it's not this, enough. Yeah. I was like, this is great. I'm from America. I need, yeah. <laughs> Is there a Trente? Uh? <laughs> well, Americans are the only ones that drink uh, that drink coffee, drip coffee, the way that we do. Pretty much, yeah. The rest of the world seems to enjoy more the espresso. Like if you ask for, you have to get. In oh yeah. Other countries, you have to get an americano. Which americano. Is where they'll take an espresso and just pour water in it, so yeah. it looks like a cup of. Americano. And it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. I, I, I was living in Scotland for a month. With another friend of mine who's a barista here in New York, and and by the end of it, we would just we, we kind of started exclusively drinking Starbucks because we're like, I want a regular cup of coffee, please. Right. You know, none of this, none of this uh, americano business. Just give me, just give me a <laughs> cup of coffee. You're the full on American. Just I don't care. Give me the subpar quality. <laughs> That's right. Above par quantity version. Yeah. So, so has it become, has coffee become too complex a drink to get any? I mean, here you can get the regular quote unquote coffee right. more easily, but it's become really like, it's a whole deal, like to get the special and you get the vente, the tall. Oh, the sure. I sound like a like a nineteen eighties stand up comedian. <laughs> the tall, the vente, the grande. I don't even Isn't know. It crazy. Yeah. All the things they can do. Why don't they just put it in a mug? And I grew up with the, it was diner coffee that yeah. people got. Mm-hmm. Like that was where you went to get it. It was just yeah, a yeah. simple after dinner drink. Mm-hmm. It helps you digest. Right? Sure. That's sort of absolutely. Like medicinal. Coffee yeah. is delicious after a meal. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Or like dessert. It's, like, like if I have a big meal, there is something really comforting about like a cappuccino or a cup of coffee just to kind of like settle you know and then you know start that digestive process mm-hmm. yeah you know it's great but uh, but for a sambuca works too mm-hmm. yeah. sure it does <laughs> just pure grain alcohol is yeah. really mm-hmm. good i put two bottles in a construction hell uh-huh. of straws of some like <laughs> ever clear yeah just, you know, that's it have at it you've seen me get crazy chase it down with a bottle of clone great <laughs> Well, your breath smells like Drakkar. <laughs> mm, thanks. I'm also lit right now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't speak near an open flame. Um, tea is not the same. My dad would drink tea after meals, but tea mm. always felt to me like a more, not intellectual drink, but more like, we're going to sit in the parlor and drink teas mm. and talk about the state of the world. Is that, mm. am I crazy? Uh, no, tea does feel more sophisticated because it's, you know, we, used to, I think we associate with like Britishy stuff, right? You know, and we just assume the Brits are uh, smarter than we are. Mm-hmm. We do. Right. 
Um, but I don't know, Cecil, were you a coffee guy first and then a tea guy or was it concurrent? And have you always been a coffee or tea guy, like from childhood? Um, I, I want to say they were pretty concurrent. Mm-hmm. I think actually, no, I think I probably got into tea first really? because like my parents were like lifelong coffee drinkers and mm-hmm. it was just like, no, 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 that's not for kids here. Have a oh. cup of tea. But then again, growing up in the South, it was all sweet iced tea. Yeah. That was right. our version. I think we're talking strictly hot tea yeah. for this episode. Right. Although, sure. if you or, which is a whole other culture, right. right? The whole sweet tea culture is like sweet completely tea. growing up in Tennessee. Yeah. We had, I mean, it was tough to find. Everywhere. It was it was tough to find unsweetened tea. Sure, right. sure. Uh, no, my wife is from is from the south as well. She she is constantly looking for good sweet tea anywhere yeah. we can find it. Usually a barbecue mm-hmm. place or like a salt oh, place absolutely. Will have it. Yeah, but yeah. I think it does speak to the versatility of tea. Is that it works really well as a cold drink, mm-hmm. and and coffee does. I know there are people who like. Uh, isn't there like a cold brew coffee where it comes in some weird yeah, like yeah. 1970s beer bottle? Uh, is, yeah. Is that any good? Or it is, is it... very good. It is very really? good. Uh, cold brew coffee. I don't know how they do it, but it's like coffee concentrate. My, my understanding is that you just, essentially you just brew coffee very slowly in a cold environment. Okay. So instead of brewing coffee over, you know, 10 minutes or mm-hmm. five minutes or whatever, you brew it over a couple of hours. Right. And you just let it sit. So it becomes ah. very concentrated. And then you can add extra water or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, I was at like some place that was starting doing like nitrous coffee where they like, it, it's a iced coffee mm-hmm. that is made in a similar way to like Guinness. So it has that kind of like nitrate, like it, like it sure. has those nitrogen bubbles, like again, yeah, 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 top. like, okay. and that is not for the faint of heart. No, <laughs> like, like I, I had a bottle and then just you know just merrily like walked my way around an entire city for the next like six hours. I, it became like um, like requiem for a dream. Yeah, pretty much. Just a steady cam strap yeah. on you. Everything's moving at the speed of light. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna steal this cop's gun. Let's see what happens. <laughs> That that does speak to one thing that coffee has going for it. If I know tea has some caffeine as well, and there are probably teas that are stronger in caffeine than, there are. than um, coffee is. Mm-hmm. But coffee has become so much a symbol of productivity. Right. Which, going back to the idea of, like, are you a coffee person? Do you, mm-hmm. like, pray to the god of coffee to help you get through your day? Right. right. Um, I dated one of those once, and God bless his heart, he would drink one of the venti he would drink a venti cup of coffee, so like the largest cup of sure. Starbucks coffee. Before the Trenta came in. Yeah, which because that's just yeah. ludicrous. Um, he would drink <laughs> one of those like every two hours over the course of an eight-hour work day. No. Every day. No. Every that's day. A, that's a drug habit. Yeah. It is. At that point, you're becoming dependent on something. You're addicted to uppers at that right. point. Yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you don't need this just to sort of kick off your day and no. shake off the sleepies. Yeah, no. That's what happens with coffee, though. Like that, that Maybe that's the culture that strings up around us. They're all like... You basically become a drug addict because yeah. you yeah. have to have it. If you don't have it, mm-hmm. your life is falling apart. You're a socially accepted cokehead. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> that's a problem we don't talk about. Why is that not part of the national conversation? <laughs> right. It's just um, the coffee I, I found out recently yeah. uh, the what popularized coffee in the United States uh, is the idea of standardized time. Because prior to that, nobody ever had a call time for work. It was just, really? yeah, it was just get up and go in. Like most people, when it was things were more uh, agrarian, specifically You're outside like, of You would start work when cities. the sun rises. Yeah, the sun would, would come up. You would yeah. go to work. Uh, once it became, everybody had to get to work at the same time. And 9 o'clock was the same for everyone in town. Uh, it wasn't just when the sun reached a point you got there. Then everybody needed to start getting alarm clocks mm. and having that caffeine kick to get them going. So it really, in a way that tea never has been, tea to me feels like it was designed or is enjoyed at times of relaxation. Sure. And coffee is enjoyed at times of productivity. Sure. Well, I think even in the morning, it's the difference between having one of those fancy alarm clocks where where it slowly gets brighter and mm-hmm. then the music right. slowly gets dimmer so that you're brought you're you're brought to a waking state in a in a calm way yeah. and just like one of those old school like death charge oh yeah yeah yeah, ding, like, ding, ding, yeah. like death charge right. alarm yeah exactly yeah. like that that's the difference like, they both can do sort of the same thing one other thing for for tea though is when when you go to a restaurant or even when you make it at home they bring you hot water mm. and tea bags and you make it yourself so you get to dictate Exactly how strong it is. You right. have a lot more control over over how it's made up. Sure. And also, um, if we're moving over to tea now, uh, one thing that tea wins on is variety. Oh, absolutely. There are yeah. so many different yeah. – and, and 
not even just herbal teas. These are like speaking specifically tea leaves. You've got, uh, you know, Earl Grey and English Breakfast and Orange mm-hmm. Pico and mm-hmm. all these. Chamomile. And oolong. No, yeah. that's a different. No, chamomile. Chamomile's an herbal. So, an herbal. so having, you know, worked in many, many a restaurant that, you know, when people are like, oh, I want a, I want a cup of tea. And it'd be like, okay, do you, let's start at the basics. Do you want black, green, or herbal? Okay. Those are your kind mm-hmm. of main varieties of tea. And then if you want, you know, or you can be like caffeinated or decaffeinated. Essentially, your ways to think about Herbal it. is decaffeinated. Herbal is decaf. You know, okay. and that's things like apple cinnamon, Orange, lemon, chamomile, ginger. ginger. I know. I have like three different kinds of ginger tea in my cupboard at home. Yeah. Um, Ginger tea is delicious. That's great. That's great for your throat. It's great for your throat. It's actually really good for your stomach as well. Because ginger ginger is really good for your tummy. Yes. Um, So I drink that. But that's like my, like before I go to bed tea. And I'm like, oh, I don't want to drink anything with caffeine. Sure. Herbal teas are great. Bet Chamomile tea, lavender tea before bed. What's that? Uh, sleepy time? Get mm-hmm. some yeah. sleepy time tea? There's a tea that I love <laughs> called uh, Christmas in Paris. And oh. I realize that this makes me sound as much like a tea drinker Bonjour. as yeah. vanilla biscotti makes me sound like a real coffee drinker. Um, oh, this That's is, okay. You're legit, Mark. You're totally thank legit. You, Cecil. Yeah, really. This is a tea that is made of uh, chocolate and lavender. Oh, oh that and sounds nice. it is. Oh, that sounds man. really lovely. Yeah, actually. I just actually just went online and ordered a case of it <laughs> because <laughs> we only had it at a grocery store in the south when I was there for Christmas. The Fresh Market. You remember the Fresh I Market? I do remember the Fresh Market. Man, that place was the best grocery. I, store. I actually learned so much about food and like like fancy coffees mm-hmm. there. The Fresh Market is a southern chain of grocery stores that are super delicious and organic and fresh and everything's awesome. They, they were kind of like the proto Trader Joe's or mm-hmm. pro, like proto Whole Foods. Okay. You know, like, but that, but they were, it was the only game in, mm-hmm. especially in Knoxville, you know, but it was like, oh, look at all these different kinds of coffee that right. you could get, you know, rather than this, you Folgers. 900 you know? yeah. different kinds of olive in yeah. here. Like yeah. it was one of those yeah. uh, I really like, fancy places. There are definitely more cool names for tea as well, like Christmas in Paris. Mm-hmm. There's probably other stuff. Sure. Like, like the, the, the they all sound like sailor. weed names. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the variety. You're like, oh, so your dealer pulls up and you're like, well, did you want some oolong yeah. or did you want some Russian gunpowder or? <laughs> I would buy a tea called Russian gunpowder. Well, Russian tea is, uh, I mean, is it Russian gunpowder? Yeah. It has like kind of a smoky flavor. So you spin your cup and only one in six sips will actually <laughs> give you caffeine. <laughs> That's it. And you never know when it's going to come. How do you know what time it is? I do, but I want you to tell everybody. I don't want to keep it just to us. Oh, man. Everybody, it's time for the Max Fun Drive. Did you get me a gift this year, Hal? I'm going to give you the same gift that I give you every year, friendship. Oh, thanks, buddy. Right. You know what? Our listeners can give us a gift for the Max Fun Drive, and we can give them gifts. That's how this works. Yeah. Here's what's up, everybody. Uh, the Max Fun Drive is our annual uh, pledge drive because this is a listener-supported podcast network. That's right. And this is the best time of year to become a member. We have a lot of thank you gifts. It's a real celebration of everything Maximum Fun. If you've always been thinking about donating to Maximum Fun and been listening for a while, or if you're brand new and just learning about the network, this is the time to to join on and lend your voice to the Max Fun family via money. Not only is this the best time to join the Maximum Fun Network because of the prizes that you can get as part of our pledge drive, which Hal will tell you about in a moment, but more because of our challenge donors. We love our challenge donors because they have decided that in addition to their uh, funds that they are pledging and their support that they're pledging to Max Fun, they're going to give additional support for every single new and upgrading member to the MaximumFun.org family. Don't you want to be part of this family? Come on, you guys. You've got Judge John Hodgman. You've got my brother, my brother, and me. You've got Can I Pet Your Dog? And you have us. We got this. And you know what? In this moment, you got this. In this family, are we the two weird uncles that have our own table at Thanksgiving? Yeah. There's the the grown-ups table. There's the kids table. And then there's the backyard where they make Hal and I sit. (laughs) We're the family members that nobody talks about anymore. Now, that's right. There are a lot of benefits to donating that I want to talk about for just a second. Uh, one is the feeling that you get when you donate. So I've donated to public radio. I've donated to political campaigns. Whenever I give money to a cause that I support, it makes me feel good and I feel some ownership in that, which is definitely the case in, in our network and our show. Like we are a show by fans for fans. So uh, you, you get to be involved in that in a deeper way. And we have a goal. 
And that what's goal, the goal, Hal? The goal for this drive, Mark, is mm-hmm. five thousand new and upgrading members. Easy breezy, beautiful cover, girl. We got this. <laughs> exactly. And we have gifts for when you set up your recurring monthly donation. So why don't we go through some of those gifts right now? I wish you would. Okay. At the $5 level, uh, you get exclusive content from each of the shows on the network. We did a special episode that Mark suggested that I think we we made each other laugh more in this episode than we have in any episode <laughs> since. Uh, it's oh, Madcap. Yeah. And yeah. We were fired up about this one. We you were. will get this 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 episode. We're both so this, mad. This episode only exists. It wasn't even suggested. This episode exists because I got fired up about a topic and I texted Hal. I was like, we have to talk about this right now. Now, at the $10 level, also very cool, is a drive-exclusive bandana. So they have designed bandanas, 22 of them, that represent each of the Maximum Fun shows, including a special We Got This uh, bandana. You guys, they are so good. I got so excited about this. Now, at the $20 level, there's the Max Fun Adventure Necessity Collection. It's everything you need to survive in the wilds of whatever area in which you live. Pretty sure, Hal, it's not wilds. It's <laughs> Wildren. Okay. If you're in the Wildren, you need all these tools to survive. We're talking about a multi-tool, which is like a nail file and a knife, scissors, tweezers, a toothpick. And it has the Max Fun Rocket logo on it, which is very nice. You've got a paracord bracelet. Also has the Max Fun logo on it. There's toilet tissue. People don't use leaves when you're out in the Wildren. Use toilet tissue. But the best part, I think... The foil packet of hot chocolate. So you have some hot chocolate for sitting around the campfire. That's all. You I know want. what? You're right. This is the kit that will allow you to survive anything. <laughs> you were not, you were not overplaying that, Hal. This is designed for the zombie apocalypse. That's right. Now at the $35 per month level, you get a vacuum thermos with a travel tumbler, a really nice stainless steel thermos. Again, with that max fun rocket on it. Take a rocket ship right to keeping your beverage, whatever temperature they were uh, when you poured them into the thermos in the in the first place. Uh, NASA's original logo yeah. and catchphrase. <laughs> and that can be yours. You can own a piece of – like the po- <laughs> we're the NASA of podcasting, right? Yeah, we are. Max Fun is the NASA of podcasting because we are boldly going to places that – oh, let's be honest. It's because there's a rocket on the logo. <laughs> exactly. You get that for $35. Per month. So uh, here's the cool thing. If you're already a member, first of all, thank you for thank supporting you. us. If you upgrade your current donation, then you can be eligible for all of these awesome gifts that I told you and more. There are all sorts of gifts and you can see them in one place, Mark. Where can you see them, Hal? MaximumFun.org. It says donate right there on the page. You click there. You get to see all the gifts, and you get to select the level that's right for you. You can donate it as as little as $5 a month, or you can go all the way up to $200 a month. It's up to you, whatever you're comfortable with. Now, here's how you set up your donation. Once you select the level, you put in your credit card info. And during that, it's going to ask you which shows you listen to on the Maximum Fund Network. And this is the important part for us. The way to support our show directly is by listing us as one of the shows that you listen to. Once you set up your donation, that is it. It automatically pulls money out every month. If you want to change the card, that's the only time you'd have to go to the site to change anything. Don't you pity the people who are waiting? Why are they waiting? Just do it now because it feels so great to do it. It takes like two minutes and then you're on your way to getting great gifts and being a a supporter of not only this show, but the network that supports our show and so many other great shows. Maximum fun. Uh, there is another thing that we're missing here for tea, which is that you can tell the future with tea leaves. Right? That's true. Well, you actually – you can. There is a way to do like the fortune-telling thing with coffee. How? Uh, if you've ever had Turkish coffee. No. Uh, so again, I worked in a restaurant that had like legit Turkish coffee. This is out of the big urn when they bring it around to the table, like the tall pour spout. Or is no. that Mor- that's like a Moroccan style of coffee. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. like a samovar kind of gotcha. thing. But this okay. is – so Turkish coffee is like – uh, you, you can, uh, it, it's as finely ground as you can possibly, like it's like dust mm-hmm. okay. and then it's brewed exceptionally strong and it's like, there's like a little thick, you know, like little thing of sludge at the bottom where like, you know, where the dust has kind of gotten through. Right. Um, and then supposedly, you know, you take the tea and you cup and put it upside down and spin it or do whatever it is you do. And then you can kind of tell the future from that. 
Sure. Um, wow. So in psychic powers, they're even. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I think I think the tea leaves probably got a little bit more play sure, out sure. of that whole tradition. The coffee that you're only doing it in Istanbul. That's right. Yeah. yeah. You gotta have you gotta have your Turkish grandma do that for you. Right. But let that be a note to everybody out there that there's so many things in your trash that can tell you what the future holds. Absolutely. <laughs> Just dig in. <laughs> yeah. Dig in and take a look. Have this banana fun. peel says that we're gonna have a great show tonight. That's right. Yeah. Great. <laughs> The sixth dimension is filled with cracked eggshells. Um, so right. let's start. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you, please. I was going to say, we need, we're going to need to start looking at criteria that each of them have. We've talked a lot mm-hmm. about coffee. Uh, we've talked a little bit about tea. Mm-hmm. Uh, have, do we need to make a pros and cons list? I, it's been so long since we've done a binary episode that I forget how we do them. <laughs> oh, sure. We, we um, can do whatever we want. Why don't we do pros and cons? Great. Okay. Because we do have to do a show in a little bit. Yeah, yeah. we actually, yeah, we are. We got work. See. We got some work. We are 35 minutes Great. from our Easy. show beginning. That's fine. And Cecil is currently in jeans and a hoodie. That's okay. <laughs> He'll be fine. They'll love him no matter what. That's right. The, the, audience, will. the audience will understand. Cecil can control an audience to the point where they will believe that he is yeah. wearing a full tuxedo. <laughs> be like, close your eyes. Yeah. See? There Imagine I wore something way more fancy than what I'm wearing right now. You can control an audience better than David Copperfield in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> It really just goes, look over there. Yeah. <laughs> Even like during crossover when we were doing the, the Thrilling Adventure Hour, mm, like, no yeah, crossovers, yeah. everybody's like, look at how he controls an audience. Like mm-hmm. in a good way. Like they're completely wrapped in what you're saying. Oh. So there you go. It's fun. That's it. It's fun. All right. But we've got to get you ready for we the show. we got to do this. So we got to do this. this. Pros and cons. Okay. okay. Um, well, I mean, like you said, like I think uh, coffee is coffee is a drug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sometimes you want to be on drugs. Sometimes you don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And tea is like a little bit more mild of a drug. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like you can definitely drink enough tea to the point where you're like buzzing, but it, I think it's a little more effort. Okay. It's also milder. Tea yeah. is not as right. strong a flavor. It's always a complimentary. Mm. Uh, it's always a complimentary flavor. And, and the things you used to sweeten it with, you might put a little sugar, but generally it's honey mm-hmm. or yeah. lemon. It's yeah. much more has a more natural feel, even though they both are made from plants. Sure, as all drugs are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the the tea is definitely a milder. It's a it's a better sidekick. Yeah. The coffee is mm-hmm. always like, like check me out. Yeah. Like I think I think the Brits had it right. Like kind of afternoon tea time is like when you need like a little bit of a pick me up to get right. through your day, but you don't. Don't want like to take a sledgehammer to your you know to your like body. Yes, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and you don't see teacups littering the side the side of the highway everywhere. It's always <laughs> some like McDonald's coffee cup. They're like is that Mc- was great. I need more. Is McDonald's coffee garbage or is it really good? I actually like McDonald's coffee for breakfast time. It's the re- it's what pulls me into McDonald's. Oh. If I may um, point this out too, now that I mention it, uh, aroma. I think coffee definitely has the edge. Ooh. As in far as far as pros go, coffee has the aroma edge and the drug edge. Oh wow! Yes, I do like the smell, even though I can't. It's so strong that I have to put like cream and sh- I would yeah. have to put so many things in it to mm-hmm. be able to drink it. Yeah, that it's it's too difficult and caffeine wreaks havoc on my system. Oh yeah, yeah. But the smell of it is like Wonderful. I know yeah. you could I could sm- you could. Give me a smell test, a blindfolded smell test, and I would know if I was inside of a Starbucks mm-hmm. or if it was if it was Jennifer brewing it at home mm-hmm. like, or, or at a diner. Like you can, you can really like d- yeah. differentiate that. And the smell of coffee feels like the promise of a day. Yeah, to me. <laughs> You know what I mean? Because you're you like a politician, right? Well, you, wake you, up, America! Yeah, with a nice steaming cup of this coffee. Coffee is delicious. <laughs> the best coffee you will ever have. Uh, um, this cup is going to be huge. <laughs> Yeah, but it feels like when I smell coffee, I'm like, ah, okay, this yeah. day is starting. We're kicking things off. It's like Let's coffee, go. coffee and bacon. Like, yeah. if 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 there was if there was like any smell to get you out of bed in the morning, it's either oh, the yeah. smell of coffee or the smell of bacon. The, like, you know? if if there's any smell that uh, gets you out of bed from another room and beckons you toward it, of yeah. course, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're like, oh, this is delicious. I'm gonna go right back to bed. Yeah. Have you guys seen the Folgers commercial that's out now where a couple is moving? And they're in the, it's like in the morning, most of their kitchen is packed up and they're, and somebody's brewing Folgers. I think the husband or the, the wife is, and the husband's like, I packed up the cups. So they look through the boxes to find like a gravy boat and a ramekin. And they're like, these things will hold liquid. We've got to have this coffee or we're going to die. Oh, sweet. Like Sid and Nancy. And they drink the coffee. Because they're addicts. Yeah. They're yeah. like, uh. Because they have a serious They're problem. suburban acceptable addicts. And the, the end of the commercial is. The the husband's like, so where do you think we should start with the packing? And then she gives him this like side eye, come hither glance, and goes, 
I think this is a pretty good place. And you just get the sense that as soon as the camera cut away, that they were knocking boxes over with the most passionate, <laughs> filthy love making in a suburban just kitchen. ripping the clothes off. Yeah, just every, it was just nine and a half weeks with coffee just <laughs> spilling it all over and burn my nipples. And that's the guy. Yeah. Like, it was very weird. I hope so by the voice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, why can't a woman have that voice? Burn my nipples. <laughs> Whatever you want, Patty. No. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, like, it was just weird. Like, it almost spoke to how coffee is fetishized, even sure. even more than tea. Although tea feels more like there are more tea snobs. Right? There's, well, and I think there's there's like okay, so so uh, I think one of the benefits of tea is diversity mm-hmm. because there are so many kinds of tea, mm-hmm. yeah. and even within you know like a black you can get a black tea. You know, like the sort of Russian tea has like a smoky flavor, or like an oolong has like a light flavor, mm-hmm. and then you get into green tea, which is. A whole other sort of, you know, flavor spectrum and, you know, uh, so you, you can kind of go wherever you want with that. I feel like right. what coffee has, where coffee has the edge in aroma, tea has the edge in taste. Mm, yeah, it's like subtle variations in yeah, taste that are right. more pronounced. And tea, just in general, I mean, I love coffee. I drink coffee every day, but to me, tea actually tastes better. Mm. Right. Yeah. It's a little cleaner. It's a little like it doesn't kind of like weigh you down, Mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely. Um, So if tea's got the edge in flavor, coffee mm -hmm. has the edge in aroma and potency. Mm -hmm. uh, What else are we looking at? Oh, and tea has the edge in variety. Variety. Um, I think tea also has the edge in sort of presentation. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know, there is something like like you were saying. There is something kind of fun about like they bring you the the hot water and then the teacup and the little the the spoon to put your your used tea bag in and like all the things you can go with it. And also, you know, tea has this kind of you know sort of Britishy idea of you know there's certain sandwiches that are served. Mm -hmm. It's the only drink that should come with you know a cookie on the side. Yeah, sure. You know, although no, not at all. Milk should have a cookie on the side. Sure, that's true. Although I guess it just depends on where you're from. Like uh, espresso and biscotti, so okay, yeah. scratch that idea. Well, yeah, with Dunkin' Donuts, it's not a, it's not a cookie, but there's a donut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the donut with the little yeah. on it. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's true. So oh they're, man, they're both uh, and fancier coffee, non-drip coffee. Uh, fancier coffee usually does have that sort of presentation is usually well executed. Sure, just sure. getting you know, just getting a greasy spoon cup of coffee or a Starbucks in the morning. Yeah, maybe not. It's, it's like utilitarian. But I don't know. I kind of like, I like, you know, if you go to like to proper tea service, it's mm-hmm. really, it's very relaxing. It's, it's very, it's kind of something a little magical about it. It's an event. You know? It's special. It's more, yeah. sp- coffee I think there's a, day. yeah, I think there's a reason why little kids have, you know, imaginary tea parties and not imaginary mm-hmm. coffee parties. <laughs> Where they're like, oh, Mr. Bear, don't even talk to me until I've had my first cup. <laughs> I, I need to, I need to get these emails out before uh, <laughs> my dad comes in and really just lays into so, me. So d- does it come down to uh, we're making a choice bet- between productivity and relaxed imagination? Sure. That's, yeah, it seems like where we're going. Yeah. So I, what is more important, to be productive or to be imaginatively relaxed? See, again, it goes to what time of the day are you asking me this? Because what time is it currently? Currently? It it's is currently 7.34 p.m. Oh, absolutely. We have a show at 8 o'clock. I mean, even though I'm like finishing off a really terrible cup of coffee, <laughs> I mean, I would probably prefer to be drinking like a nice hot cup of tea, kind yeah. of warm up your throat, you know, cool, you know, oh, warm up from outside on a nice wintry day, you know, and also not blast your body with so much caffeine that you're going to stay up till 5 o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. I feel like people convince themselves early in life that they enjoy the taste of coffee mm-hmm. and then start yeah. to actually do it. Yeah. Tea is uh tea is much more you can from from first cup you can be like, "Oh, this is good." Yeah. yeah you can have it as oh, a yeah, kid. Sure. As a, mm-hmm. the only real exposure I had to coffee as a kid was coffee ice cream, which I love. Ooh. And I was going to say, "Well, coffee has its own ice cream flavor, but there's green tea ice cream as Absolutely. well." Absolutely. Sure. They yeah. both they both sort of exist in that world, but you can't have coffee as a you like you'd be taken away from your child if you gave them coffee at a young age. Yeah, I mean, like you know, was, I'm sure I had that moment sitting at the table where I was like, "Mom, I want to try your coffee because I've watched you drink it every day, and mm-hmm. I want to be like my parents," you know. Yeah. So then you try it, and you're like, "Oh, that is horrible! Like, yeah, why are you doing terrible that? burnt water? Why are you doing yeah. this to yourself?" Yeah. Uh, and then you kind of have to discover actually liking I feel beer is the same beer like alcohol is the same thing I mean I like beer from the time I was like really (laughs) yeah were you drinking it out of like a jug I had my first full can of beer at five whoa this explains and you're like this is delicious (laughs) how did I not know that until this point I probably could have guessed yep (laughs) well okay I yeah I'm with you guys I 
I've I've stated before on this podcast how I feel about acquired tastes, sure. which is it's basically Stockholm syndrome with, mm. with food and drink. <laughs> sure, like someone's I'll, like, I'll you will you like, like it. Exactly. I will like this. Yeah, I better just keep going. Into I'm gonna I gotta push through. Like, yeah. You don't have to push through. You're yeah. a person. Yeah, like you're the you decide. Person. You're the boss of you. Exactly. Okay. So then, what are we saying here? Let's let's uh, let's. Are there any final factors we need to consider on on either side of this that we've missed? Um, cultural importance, sure. Okay. Um, Again, it just depends on where you're from. That's I true. Guess. If you're, you know, if you're from anywhere that isn't the United States, yeah. tea is infinitely more culturally yeah. important and has had a much bigger impact on the world history. Sure. Uh, within the United States, coffee has a much more regular impact on our productivity as a nation. Do you think it's because coffee, for the most part, with the exception of maybe like, so the African blends come from like Central America, South America. It's easier to get here. It's easier to get on sort of like the Americas. And right. then tea comes from, for the most part, you know, the East, mm-hmm. right? You know, so it, we're kind of talking about like an old world, new world kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Although they, Maybe? Were both, they were both traded as really sure. important sure. commodities in, in America. Tea has a bigger place in our history because of the Boston tea party. Sure. Mm. They weren't dumping a bunch of Sanka into sure. the Boston if Harbor, they had, yeah, which yeah. is, I believe, instant coffee. It is. Would it have not just turned the Harbor into coffee? Yes. Yeah. Instead of tea. Yeah. yeah. That'd be I it. guess it did turn it into tea, didn't it? Look yeah. how mellow all those fish were. <laughs> but it'd be really salty tea, right? Yeah, exactly. Really um, salty tea. Gross salty um, tea. But I mean, there's like, you know, like I'm sure the sort of the tradition of like the Japanese tea ceremony that lasts mm-hmm. like two hours and is made up of these very intricate movements and like that, like we don't have anything like that. Over right. here, except yeah. for watching a hipster, you know, create perfect latte art. <laughs> sure, <laughs> but after two hours, I'm sure you get pretty tired of that, and you're yeah. just like, I just you want go my, into a, I just want my latte, please. Yeah, you go you. into a hipster <laughs> joint, and they do the like, oh, well, we don't have drip machines here, but we've got this weird cone thing where we'll just put a coffee filter over. Okay, a cup. listen here. Can I say I those things drive me the crazy. Pour, the pour over, the pour over. I called? am so like. I I don't I don't buy it. Buy I just a Mr. Don't coffee. Buy it. I don't buy it. Pour over is pointless. <laughs> what about the French press where you have to do the work? French press is fine. Mm-hmm. It's uh mm-hmm. it's a technique and you got the you get the fresh brewed pot right on the table. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, the pour over just feels like like I feel like I'm being punished for wanting drip coffee. Right. And they're like, "Okay, if this is what you want, American, <laughs> then it, we're going to make you wait 40 minutes for it. Yeah. And you're going to watch me do it yeah. as I scowl at you the entire time. Ugh, the pour over is so annoying. There's nothing better than getting a drink served to you by someone you know hates you the minute yeah, you walk yeah, in the course. door. Yeah, I will say, much. as a waiter uh, for several years, when people ordered hot tea, we would groan at that. Oh, really? Because the presentation was so elaborate. Oh. And it's like, can't you just order a coffee? I can go to the little tap. <laughs> it's already I can made. just tap the coffee into a cup <laughs> and bring it to you. Oh, man. And then walk around with a pot later and not have to. Uh, and you're like, here's your cup and your thing. And you're yeah. also some little wedge of lemon that I had to go yeah. to a special place downstairs and, and cut. Here's, here's the and, box of tea that I have to stand here and hold while you pick one. Right, right, right. <laughs> like you're choosing a dueling pistol. <laughs> That's right. But look, we're speaking as consumers in this, not as providers. Okay, sure. I do have to say, though, I, I never worked as a server, and I, I would be terrible at it for this one reason. And I've seen this happen. I've, I've eaten with people who do this. Mm-hmm. You order a coffee, mm-hmm. and then the coffee is like half full, or you don't want any more. And they come over to, to you know, your server comes over just to refill the coffee as a courtesy. Like, I'm sure. going to check on you. Yeah. And then, like, they don't say anything. They just put their hand over over the cup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just seems really rude. And if somebody did that to me... They would get a hand covered in hot steaming coffee <laughs> in 10 <laughs> seconds. I go, oops, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm and the f- fact that you waited that 10 seconds <laughs> makes it seem like you did it on purpose. <laughs> well, it's a slow drip. I call it's it the pour over. It's the pour over. That's the real, <laughs> the, the real pour over. Yeah. Um, so, okay, so looping back, that actually, that's kind of one of the reasons why sweet tea was invented. Um, so the whole thing is that like sweet tea was invented by waitresses okay. in like these time greasy spoon diners who, you know, the idea is if you had unsweetened iced tea, you'd pour it in and then, you know, the customer would add their own sugar and then the waitress would come by and sort of top you off with this tea, but that would kind of mess up your sugar to sure. iced tea uh, ratio. Uh, I didn't know that. So they were like, fine, we're just going to brew it sweet. That way you don't have to mess with it. You just have to drink it. So the, the South has, 
uh, grumpy servers to thank yeah. for. I mean, we've all seen Mel's Diner. Sure. Do you remember, true. you remember Flo from that? Like, this is <laughs> invented by that woman. The, the real version of that character. Uh. Um, one more thing I want to say that we may have, uh, we may have not given tea its due medicinally. <laughs> Uh, sure. we, we met, you mentioned the ginger tea, but yeah, ginger coffee tea. is a drug, but in many ways, um, tea can be sort of the equivalent of Eastern medicine. Sure. Like you get that sort of throat coat mm-hmm. tea. Throat coat yes. is, for actors and singers, yeah. it's very popular. Yeah. Uh, there's, uh, like you mentioned, the sleepy time tea. Mm-hmm. Yes. There's teas for all sorts of. Oh, ailments. sure. Like echinacea tea. Mm-hmm. And, and I feel like, and, you know, kind of the idea of tea being this, you know, like if coffee is like the gut bomb that gets you going in the morning, tea mm-hmm. is the like nice relaxing continuation of your day. Like it, it doesn't hit your system so hard. Yeah. Although coffee helps you poop. It does. Coffee helps you poop. It really does. So there's something just gets everything I don't moving need there. Any help. Are yeah. there poop? Hand teas? me the coffee filters. There must be Let's teas to help you, help you poop, right? Oh, I'm sure oh, there of course. is. Yeah, yeah it's fittingly, Mark uses coffee filters to wipe sometimes. Oh. We've established that. They, uh, not sometimes. Oh, for God. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> like what? Oh. <laughs> In an emergency. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> there is tea, there is tea called Smooth Move. Ew. Oh, yeah. that sounds Does terrible. it do exactly what I think it does? Um, what do you think it does? Uh, let's let's not no. go into that. Okay, sure. <laughs> um, it sounds like. Hal, did you know that I have terrible short-term memory? I did. I've seen it happen. Did, did we mention that it's Max Fun Drive time? We did, but it bears mentioning again that we are part of a listener-supported network and that this is the prime time for listeners to get involved and make a donation and, and become uh, a, a deeper part of the Max Fun family. And if- yes. Please join the Maximum Fun family and do it now because those challenge donors that we mentioned earlier, they will provide extra support to Max Fun if you join right now during the pledge drive. That's right. That's right. And, and if you're an existing member, thank you so much. You can upgrade right now and you get all the cool gifts we talked about earlier. But I want to focus on one, and that is uh, the Maximum Fun custom drive exclusive bandana uh, that was made for us because it has a lot of cool stuff on it. It's so beautiful that I found myself, when I was sent the JPEG image of what this bandana looked like, I found myself running around the streets of New York just showing it to whoever would look at it because I was so excited that this that this bandana existed featuring topics from our dumb little show that we love. Yes, and even catchphrases that uh, that are relatively new to the show, like asked and answered. So this is like... uh, this is in the current style of the show. This isn't like some old bandana that, that hasn't been listening for a while. This bandana yeah. is current and it's hip and it, and it's easy to get. It's easy to get yeah. any of the gifts that we have. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how to do it. Okay. Tell them. Go. Why are you telling them you're going to tell them? Just tell them. <laughs> Let me tell you what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right uh, now. Just Five, go. Four, three, two, tell. You go to maximumfun.org. You click donate. It's going to be right there, loud and proud. And you can see all the different gifts available at all the different levels of donation. You can go as low as $5 a month or you can go as high as $200 a month. It's really whatever you're comfortable with. And you can select the level that is best for you. You put in your credit card info. Okay, and and then it's going to ask you which shows on the network you listen to, and this oh, this is the most important part, you guys. Totally, it is because this is where you can support Mark and 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 myself and and really help us put more money back into the show and and make it even better. I'm thinking like crowns, velvety robes, uh, and like a a million dollar studio, but maybe that's next. Yeah, we need all of those visual elements for our audio podcast. Very important. So list us as one of the shows that you listen to and we'll get part of the donation that you make. So that's a way to directly benefit us and any of the other great shows you listen to on the Maximum Fun Network. And once you've done all that, you're all set. Your donation comes out automatically each month. And you don't have to do anything else unless like you change cards or you want to do a different form of payment. That is it. And again, thank you to those who have already supported and thank you in advance to those who are going to support us. We really appreciate it. We thank you. We love you. We know you're going to do this. So for Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. And for Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And we won't worry. You, you got, got this. Are, do you guys feel confident that we will come to an answer if we count to three and all say uh, simultaneously what we think the winner is? 
I'm willing to try. I'm still it. I'm still unclear as to what the like what we're judging the criteria by here. Oh, we just did the, the okay. criteria we ran being, over everything. Oh, okay, we okay. have our pros and cons, all oh, the different gotcha. criteria: yeah. aroma, taste, medicinal yeah. drug. Yeah. So um, in light of all of this, situ like the 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 experience of it. Yeah, let's let's try. It. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Okay, all right. All right. Based on everything that we have just discussed, we got to pick one. Yeah, we'll go. Yeah. We'll, it'll be one, two, three. Say it. Great. Okay. All right, here we go. You ready? Yeah. yeah. One, two, three. Coffee. Tea. What? Oh, interesting. Oh okay. Tell us yeah. why. Why um, coffee? I think coffee is. I mean, uh, again, like culturally, it's more significant to me. You know, okay. tea is like a fun thing that you know, like I have my little tea shelf, and you know, and it's it's like fun to show off. Every once in a while, I'll be like, look, I got this tea, this like special kind of chai tea that you can only find in one thing. But I'm not drinking that every day. Right. What I'm drinking every day is like a nice solid cup of coffee, you know, brewed in a French press. You know, like I like the way I like it and that gets my day started. And that's like a, you know, I'm a creature of habit. Okay. Whereas tea is a little more like it's fancy and I'm not a fancy person all the time. You just said something very interesting. So you're choosing the worker bee. Yeah. Over sort of the fancy. Um, sure. Tent. So we're like the, the fat kids camp as opposed to the rich kids camp that comes over. Right. right. And keep in mind, pants. we're a bunch of Americans because, right. you know, I have plenty of British friends that like their sort of Yorkshire builder's tea is their cup of Joe. Right. Like that's, you know, the British Empire is kind of built on, you know, like you stiff know, upper lips. Yeah. And like all the tea that sort of that gets poured over them. Yeah. yeah. And they're like yeah. that. You're like, you know, the way we would assume, you know, like, oh, kind of the, you know, regular everyday thing that just means tea to them. Uh, but yeah, I think it, for Americans, it's definitely, we're like a coffee-centric culture rather than a tea-centered culture. Okay. Yeah, I guess um, if coffee is America's wife, tea is America's mistress, mm -hmm. and if we go with, uh, if we if we wind up going with Cecil on this, then we are showing fidelity to our significant others, and if we choose tea, we're dirty cheaters. That's right. Well, then let me say this. The, you all chose tea, though, right? We did. Okay. But you made a compelling argument and you are our guest. Yeah. Oh, don't, don't, don't change your minds because of me. Um, I think you make a good point though. You do make a good point about the work a day. Uh, the, I didn't think about the fact that tea is a special occasion more for me, more of a special occasion. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. There's a reason why it's called a coffee listen. mate. Oh, oh there you go. Well, listen, I will brew a pot of tea only if the coffee pot is dirty. Uh, you know, I'm know. just like, oh, I don't want to clean out that French press and make coffee. Yeah. You know what? Maybe a nice cup of tea instead. <laughs> it's the second choice. It's the it's the it's the runner up in, right. in 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 my daily life. Shall we do this? Um, I am comfortable with it. I enjoy both. Tea has been given its due, mm -hmm. but I think uh, I will defer to our guest. He made excellent points in his closing argument, and I think we're ready to uh, rule. Okay, uh -huh. people of the world. You have many choices for hot drinks. There's hot chocolate. But it really comes down to two. Tea or coffee. And all of you people who don't live stateside, who hold your tea so precious and dear, take that cup that you drink every day and pour it straight into the rubbish <laughs> bin. Because now you drink coffee the American way. With a big flag wrapped around you. And, and uh, it's, the, it's the working Joe. There's a reason why it's called the cup of Joe. We want that working Joe every day. Gives us that get up and go. Mark and I did uh, the Thrilling Adventure Hour for 10 years. Sponsored was, by Work Juice brand coffee. Yeah. Which then became a real coffee. Which I, I had. People loved it. it and delicious. they drank it. And it was, it, it was a whole thing. So there is really a culture around coffee. Uh, David Lynch has his own brand of coffee. David Lynch has his own Ooh. brand of coffee. And if David Lynch drinks it, then it's got to be good. Yeah, do you, Guys, do you think Dave, that Agent Dale Cooper is out there drinking some oolong? No. He needs a <laughs> cup of black coffee strong with his slice of cherry pie. And that is why... In the war of coffee versus tea, coffee comes out on top. Thanks, David Lynch. And My brother's going to be so mad. And Gabe, listen, this is for you. <laughs> I love you, man. You you are my brother now, as I've become Mark's podcasting brother. And your food is delicious, and I still remember three years ago having your barbecue sauce. But, man, put down the tea and brew yourself a cup of joe. Me, I'll be drinking water because I am three. And that's how it goes, asked and answered. And I'm sorry that I interrupted you in the process of saying, 
Thank you, Cecil, for Aww. being on the show. Cecil Baldwin, Thank you, also known as Cecil Palmer, to the listeners of yes. the Welcome to Night Vale podcast. That's right. Um, thanks for being here. Can you tell yeah, everybody you. your uh, where they can find you online or in the world? Uh, you can find me online on Twitter at Cecil Baldwin III. Uh, same on Instagram, uh, Facebook. Uh, you know what? Google. Google is a really good place to start. Just Google oh, it up. Just, just Google it up. You're the first guy to be like, you know what? Just Google. Just me. Google it. And tell, you know. <laughs> tell everybody where you're going to be because you're all over. You're, you're, this will air uh, in, in March. It is March now. So you've come back. From New Zealand and, and Australia. Australia. Uh, got stuff coming up. Night Vale is planning a East Coast tour uh, coming up in April. Uh, we're hitting a lot of East Coast, Midwest, and some Southern dates. And then we're planning uh, the second part of our United States tour sometime in the summer. Yes. And then hopefully we will get back to uh, the UK and Europe where I will uh, personally try to apologize for all the uh, tea drinkers <laughs> uh, individually. I'm going to try and get to everybody yes. while I'm there. You uh, are our We Got This ambassador abroad. That's right. I'll be like, I'm so sorry I chose coffee over tea. <laughs> you're, you, you're right. Uh, you were right. We're both right. Well, there you go. Cecil Baldwin, a, a man among men, a podcaster among podcasters. Because I didn't say this at the beginning, I want to quickly thank Corey Funk, who suggested this topic. Thank you, Corey Funk. Yeah, yes. thank you, Corey. An excellent topic. Great yeah. name, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you just sound like you know how to play bass. I'm just going to throw it out there. Well, there are other versions of bass than funk. What about Johnny Slap? That's right. Johnny Slap, I hope you and Corey Funk get together. And David Anthony Fretless. (laughs) (laughs) And Jimmy with a pick. Now, (laughs) we know that this is just one of the many topics that you want solved. And we want to hear from you. That's right. So reach out to us on Twitter at We Got This Tweets or go to the Maximum Fun subreddit. There's probably a fight going on there right now. Yes. Or go to Facebook.com forward slash We Got This Podcast or email us at We Got This Podcast at gmail.com. Thanks, as always, to Mike Furman and Jonathan Dinerstein for our award winning theme song and score, respectively. Thank you to producer Ken Plume, to researcher Kate McManus, and graphic designer Uri Kilman. And of course, as always, thank you to you for listening to our show. We talk about all kinds of things. You put those things in your ears and we thank you for it. And thanks for all the love on Twitter and uh, in uh, Maximum Fun and everywhere that uh, people are listening to the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, For Hal Lublin, I'm Mark Gagliardi. And for Mark Gagliardi, I'm Hal Lublin. And don't worry, everyone. We We got got this. We got this. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.